One of the great things about coming to a coin convention is the opportunity to walk the floor and look at all of the cool coins that the dealers have brought. And again, here at the Summer Fun Convention in Orlando, we're going to take a look at some of the cool coins the dealers have brought to the show. Well, the coolest item that we've uh, acquired at the show was, uh, we've actually handled two of these today. This is uh, approximately 1,000 ounce silver bar that was recovered off Key West, Florida in 1985 by Mel Fisher. It came off the wreck of the Atosha that was brought down in a storm in 1622. Uh, several of these bars were recovered from the treasure ship. It was loaded with treasure. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, way to invest in silver. Um, and our customers are very happy with these. Uh, if you want to look at the inscriptions on the bar, this is the uh, manifest number right here that's stamped on the bar. This is the assayer's scoop where the bar, when it was still hot, they scooped it and tested the purity of the silver. And then this is the purity of the silver stamped here, which in this case is about 95% pure silver. This is the owner's uh, stamp here. This is signifying who owned this bar that was traveling on the ship. In this case, it was a man named Marcos, and this is a symbol that shows it belonged to Marcos. What kind of value? Uh, $50,000. Well, David, I'd like to bring uh, what I call numismatic folk art, and that's the uh, pioneer gold that was struck in this country as a result of the the various uh, strikes in gold in both the southern region and as well in the west coast um, about 100, 150 years ago. The coolest coin, I have to say, is probably the first gold dollar ever struck in the United States. But this is a Beckler gold coin. It's also known as the 30 grain gold. Back at that time, 30 grain was the specified weight for gold and the, the denomination of the dollar. But what's really cool about this, this German merchant who came over all of a sudden was right in the middle of this gold strike in the 1830s, decided to take it upon himself because of the perils of shipping gold back to Philadelphia Mint. He took it upon himself to mint gold coins. And he decided at least 20 years before, ahead of the, the, the government to make a first gold dollar. That's my favorite coin. What kind of value? As, the, uh, as a very well-worn example, uh, you know, maybe something that's been jewelry, about 1500 However, I own the MS-63 in my registry set, and I paid uh, about $70,000 for that one. Well, I tell you what, we've got America's most favorite um, gold coin, the high-relief $20 gold piece. This is a great coin. They made it in two designs, one with a flat rim, one with a wire edge. And uh, this is flat edge. It's a great coin. What's the history behind it? Why is it cool? Well, it's cool because uh, in, in 1907, Teddy Roosevelt had our coinage redesigned. Uh, there was a lot of various reasons for doing that. He wanted the most beautiful coins. And <clears throat> a, a sculptor named Augustus St. Gaudens redesigned the coinage and came up with a brand new design. This coin is a high relief 20 worth about 45000 One of the coolest coins we brought with us here today is a piece of territorial gold. Uh, a lot of people don't know anything about territorial gold and, and the cool part about it is that it was circulated in the U.S. as currency but wasn't struck by the U.S. Very, very interesting history that go around these pieces. They weigh the same, they assay the same, and they're just wonderful, low mintage, uh, rare coins that truly haven't met their potential. This is an 1861 Clark Gruber 5. Uh, nice part about this item is it's reasonable but rare. You're looking at the fifteen dollars to $20,000 range. But the coin also came out during the Civil War and at a period in when Colorado was short on U.S. gold coinage. So it was struck in Colorado as a supply to coins to people. Why are Clark and Gruber cool guys? 
Uh, they're, they're revolutionary or uh, free thinkers. They thought that the government themselves didn't have to produce all the currency. So they thought as long as they did a well enough job assaying the pieces and use the same standards that it should be you know, free traded among people. So they created a business model. And ballpark value of this piece? This piece, uh, because of the CAC, because of the quality, upper end 20, 25,000, you can easily pick up a nice one for 10, 12,000. I brought an 1867 shield nickel with rays. It's approved 65, and there's only 27 known survivors to exist in that grade or higher. What kind of collector would buy that for their collection? Uh, somebody that would either has enough money to pay for it in cash, or probably an avid collector or somebody that's missing this as a key date in their collection of shield nickels. Uh, what kind of value on it? Uh, we have it uh, listed at $100,000 in our catalog right now. I brought with me what's known as a bonded piece or pine cone of Lincoln cents. And what you see in here is a stack of 21 plus coins which are bonded together by weight. There's as many as 23 separate coins which were all stuck together in this to form this huge cap die bonded pine cone. How does something like that be made? What happens is, is that as the, during the striking, one coin will stick to the upper die, and then as new planchets come into the, the dies, it will get in there and just jam up the machine and keep sticking to one another until finally the press has to be stopped and they have to peel it off and the rest. And some of these end up in the bins where they end up in the on uh, hands of uh, counting rooms and the rest. Most famous one was a dime one like this, which Donna Pope kept on her table for um, as a paperweight, which had 96 coins struck into it. So this is a small compared to that one, but it's the most, it's a piece I really love to show off and for people to see. What kind of value? Value in this piece is around six to $7,000.